Hello everyone, I'm Giuseppe De Palma, PhD student uh, at the University of Bologna, and uh, I'm one of the authors of this work that I will be presenting today, which is about serverless computing and in particular about scheduling functions. So today I will uh, talk about, uh, I will um, introduce serverless, talk about the one of the uh, most famous open source platform, which is Apache OpenWhisk that we used in our work and uh, we extended. And the case study that uh, we used to drive the uh, work and our research on uh, some serverless, how we want to use serverless and uh, how it um, it brought us the top language, a configuration language that we created and um, how we will how we applied it on in the case study. In the end, I will show some uh, run, some tests and benchmarks that we run and then conclude. So let's start with a briefly view on um, a brief view on serverless computing. Um, so serverless computing today is uh, one of the hot topics in the cloud um, in cloud computing. Although at this point uh, it's almost eight years old, but uh, everyone keeps saying it's the new uh, hot um, paradigm in the cloud. So serverless computing is it lets developers uh, have access to a platform that can run functions written in several lang programming languages. The platform uh, takes care of um, running the functions, um, scaling up and down the resources needed, usually in form of containers. And the developers, the users, can just write the their apps as a deploy their apps as a composition of stateless functions, upload them to the platform, and uh, save time, and also their build um, with the um, based on the execute the time it takes to execute a function. In turn, the cloud vendor manages the platform and uh, the infrastructure below, and um, giving um, restricting the platform with a strong uh, um, vendor lock-in, which is one of the downsides. Basically, the users are, are restricted to use other uh, services from the same cloud vendor, um, for example, um, or um, with paired with their serverless application, or at least the cloud vendor makes it really hard to use other, other services. But besides vendor lock-in, another of um, one of the other aspects that limits this usage is the is due to the extreme abstraction of the infrastructure. Basically, uh, not all resources are um, for function execution are the same. We call workers the the hardware that uh, the components that execute the function. Uh, for example, some of the errors that are defined in the literature um, that can be improved upon are the localities. Uh, so the data locality, code locality, session locality. To respect uh, with respect to the workers locality. Uh, for example, in this uh, diagram, we could have a serverless platform deployed over two networks. So, for example, in an edge cloud uh, scenario, in uh, one network we have the database with one worker that can execute function. In the other, we can have uh, other workers. For example, one is uh, as better hardware suited for more resource intensive tasks. It is intuitive to think that uh, executing a function that access uh, the database will be performed better in the network on the worker that is in the same network of the, with the database or some other uh, function that needs um, better hardware. It is better to run it on the on the worker with the in the other network. Currently, many open source um, open source serverless platform don't take into account the kind of worker uh, that uh, they have access to. Um, so consider these opportunities of improvement. Um, we imagined a platform that can be configured. So given uh, information about the workers uh, and the workers locality, it could accept, sorry for the sound, it could accept uh, some configurations um, that customize the scheduling of functions. So we can redirect the execution to the to proper workers. 
this fun this uh, platform could be should be deployable open source so that for example a company or some user can deploy it on premise and uh, customize it for this case to have some uh, um, the platform in house and uh, make ad hoc customization so to create these scheduling policies we chose to create a configuration language which we call tap um, TAP stands for Topology Aware Allocation Priority Policies, and this, it is used to write configuration files to define the uh, scheduling policies that can be written by uh, the users of the platform or who manages the, the platform, given that they have access to the uh, information about the nodes. And we built a prototype uh, on top of OpenWhisk. Okay, so since we used OpenWhisk, I will uh, give an overview of the uh, of the architecture and the components that we uh, added. So in this diagram, we have the a simplified view of the architecture. The yellow highlights um, the, the components that we added. Uh, so vanilla OpenWhisk on, uh, as uses Nginx on the left side um, as a reverse proxy. It receives invocation requests and the, the forwards them to the controllers. It, should, it picks one controller and uh, which in turn uses a, a, a simple scheduling algorithm to choose a worker. It just uh, calculates the hash of the function name and the namespace, chooses a home worker and that, ho that worker will always be used for that function. Then it uses a, a, there is Kafka as a communication layer between the controller and the worker to send the invocation request. Couchly B stores the some data functions and responses. And on the other side, we have the workers that execute do, uh, do the actual execution of the functions using containers. Going to our extension, uh, we added um, support to interpret tab scripts. So the configuration files uh, to both Nginx and the controller. Nginx uses the tab script to choose a controller based on the um, on this uh, scheduling policy. For example, we could uh, impose for some functions to use one particular controller. The controller in turn uh, uh, read tab scripts to apply a scheduling policies to a scheduling policy to choose a worker. Then we have a uh, Watcher service, which uh, um, gathers deployment data, pod names, uh, the labels and so on, so the workers, and then an FS, NFS server to provide this data and the tab scripts to the platform. Finally, another uh, piece that we added at the level, at the deployment level of WinWisk, is um, there the worker distribution policies. So, how much a controller can access workers? Uh, in the in the other zones besides uh, the zones it is in. So we have four policies. The default, which is the original OpenWhisk policy, which basically means um, a controller uh, has access to all of the, all of the workers, a fraction of the resource of all the workers to run functions. Plus we had the a priority um, a priority on the co-located workers. So if we have a zone with a controller inside and some workers inside, the controllers uses those workers first. Min memory is, uh, uh, gives access to foreign workers outside the zone of a controller only for one function at a time. Isolated restricts the controllers to use only the, uh, the workers in the same zone and shared is uh, free access to all. Okay, that's... Uh, that is uh, that was open whisk uh, very briefly uh, plus our extension now we'll introduce the case study that this case study uh, our idea of a configurable serverless platform was driven by this case study from uh, an industrial partner so uh, we uh, in this case study we have a smart factory with a fleet of robots and a local service inside the smart factory connected to a public cloud Public, uh, public network in the cloud, which in turn contained the uh, Biffer virtual machine. So we had this um, edge cloud continuous system. Um, in this case study, we had three tasks to perform. 
the most important one was the prediction of uh, critical events, so predictive uh, maintenance, for which we wanted to have uh, to keep the a low latency. So we wanted to uh, run these uh, tasks near the feet of robots and uh, to minimize the latency. Then we had some machine learning tasks um, uh, on the data produced by, by the robots. This one needed better hardware to run on. So uh, we imagined the cloud workers in the cloud part of the cluster and then other generic uh, tasks without constraints. So what we had in mind for a solution uh, with serverless is shown in this diagram. Um, we have the three tasks that the three tasks were translated into three in, into three kind of functions, uh, which are scattered scattered through there are three controllers. Two controllers in the smart factory, the local part of the system, uh, of which one controller takes care of the critical uh, function in the robots. So we hear. They're called the edge workers. And another controller that uh, uh, can access the local workers, the other servers in the smart factory and the cloud workers. And then on the cloud part, we have a, a cloud controller that can only use the cloud workers. So uh, the system is composed by the cybered cluster divided in the local zone, which is further divided into the, let's say, the edge zone uh, with a um, local controller dedicated to it. The gateway, which is basically is Nginx uh, with, with OpenWhisk, um, which receives the fun the request, uh, the invocation requests and forwards them to the proper uh, controller. So having multiple controllers, <clears throat> each with its set of workers, which they are tagged with the kind of function that uh, they're better suited for, brings up the idea to, of uh, creating scheduling policies so we can uh, take uh, advantage of the kind of workers that we have. And to so to create uh, these scheduling policies to better exploit such scenarios, we introduce the uh, TAP language. So uh, I will finally talk about this TAP language. I will uh, show uh, to do that to, to create scheduling policies um, with TAP language. I will show you the syntax. So uh, we will see it in action with, uh, we'll show the syntax while explaining it with a script written in YAML, um, which is an extract from the configuration uh, of the case study um, of before for the function that use machine learning. So uh, those functions that you wanted to only redirect on the cloud part of the system. So a tab script is composed by, um, I will take the laser pointer. So a tab script is composed by a, a list of policy tags, which in this case we have machine learning as a policy tag. To use these policy tags in OpenWhisk, we uh, can just tag functions. So all the functions that run machine learning tasks, tasks we label it with machine learning. Then in, in uh, OpenWhisk, the schedulers, can read the tab scripts and associate the request, the invocation request that it, uh, uh, it arrived with the label in the tab script. So for the function with machine learning tags, this uh, script is used. And uh, so we have the policy tag to um, identify the functions. And in each policy tag, we have a list of blocks. Um, a block is used to define the controller to use, the workers to use, strategy to use. The strategy is um, a way to define some, um, the way to choose our worker in a list of workers to give some customization how to choose a worker. Invalidate is how to consider uh, a worker uh, unhealthy, so not to be used. In this case, we have just one block with a controller and uh, for strategy and follow up, we, the strategy we don't specify it, uh, and, and we use the default value that we will see later. For follow up, is, uh, we have default, I will explain soon. Follow up is uh, to tell the platform what happens in case the scheduling fails. And uh, uh, the yellow highlights is what TAP uh, really focuses on 
because we had a previous iteration without the topology features of the language. So going inside the, the block, um, we have, a, the, in this case, we have the controller defined and we define co cloud controller. Defining a controller means uh, uh, when the invocation reaches Nginx, the reverse proxy, it can select, uh, uh, it will select a controller to forward the request. In this case, we are um, imposing the usage of cloud controller. With the uh, final controller, we can define the another option, which is the topology tolerance. Uh, topology tolerance defines what workers uh, an alternative controller can use. Uh, in case the uh, in case the cloud controller can't handle the uh, request, we can and it will be forwarded to another controller. And topology tol uh, tolerance will restrict the, which controllers can use. In this case, we are same, but the values are all the default one, which means uh, another controller can use any other worker. Same restricts other controllers to the same workers of the zone of this uh, of the cloud controller. So another controller must use the cloud workers. None forbids the forwarding to other controllers. Um, OK, then we have the workers. Um, the list of workers. Uh, the workers are uh, used to define which workers to use. So we can have a list of workers. Uh, with uh, a list of specific labels, the labels uh, um, in the, in uniquely define the uh, identify the workers. So a new circuit that writes um, a type script with a list of workers can specify for a for a function the usage of specific workers. Or we can have also, uh, in, as in this case, with an asterisk in front, um, we can define a worker set. A worker set is a set of workers, all the, all the workers targeted with some specific uh, uh, label, in this case, cloud. Cloud defines all the workers in the cloud part of the, of the system. Together with a worker set, we can uh, choose a strategy. So how to decide a single worker inside the worker set and an invalidate condition. So how a worker is uh, considered unhealthy. In this case, we um, we have the, a list of worker set with only one uh, worker set, which is the cloud uh, workers. So this is the entire syntax. Finally, we can see the strategy invalidate follow up. The strategy, as I said, is used to uh, define a, a strategy to choose a worker. We have random platform best first. Random intuitively randomly picks a worker. Best first um, uses the the ordering of the workers as they're written in the type script in a top top down fashion. So the first worker in a worker list is the one that always gets picked until it's invalid, then it goes on the next one and so on. The same thing for the worker set. The invalidate um, gives the user the possibility to uh, customize when a worker must not be used. So we have capacity use, where you can customize the percentage. This is in terms of memory. For example, uh, if we want to have a worker that uh, we can only use max to, um, to the half of the capacity task. We can uh, select the capacity use with 50%, and after half of this capacity is used, we stop using it. Mass concurrent invocation is the number of functions at the same time on a worker, and overload uh, offloads the um, how uh, how it is considered unhealthy on the vanilla, in this case, in vanilla open whisk way. And our oh, platform for strategy is the same thing as overload. It offloads the way uh, to choose a worker to the vanilla algorithm in OpenWhisk. Follow up is what happens if the um, scheduling fails. We have fail, which means stop there. Uh, so uh, if this, for example, in this uh, scheduling policy for machine learning, if all cloud workers are uh, unavailable or uh, the cloud worker um, can't handle the um, request and follow up was failed. 
the scheduling will stop there. We default instead, we have a special policy tag, which is uh, default. It is used to as a catch-all policy. The user can define a policy, uh, the scheduling policy with default, and this will be applied to all tagless functions. So uh, all the fu all functions with that tag, they go into the default case, or in this case, uh, as machine learning, the follow-up is default. So uh, another worker will pick it up using the default. Uh, another controller will pick up the scheduling using another default policy. So this is the entire uh, st uh, syntax to define uh, um, the scheduling policies. And now we will see it, how we applied it to the case study. So having that uh, um, deployment of OpenWhisk over the two parts of the cluster, the smart factory and the cloud part, with the three controllers and the edge lock and cloud workers. This is the entire uh, uh, scripts, which is basically three um, three policy tags. Uh, the three kind of functions were mapped to these three tags. The predictive maintenance functions were mapped to the critical tag, machine learning, the one we see until now, and the default is the one that will catch all the generic uh, uh, functions for the in this case uh, focusing on uh, the critical one um, for the critical tasks we define the first controller um, to be used the one that we wanted to dedicate to the edge workers near the fleet of robots the workers list in this case is the workers is uh, one uh, uh, it has just one entry which is the worker set with the edge uh, workers the strategy to how to choose a worker inside this worker set is randomly. And in case uh, the scheduling fails using this policy, we stop there and we don't try to um, forward the request to other controllers. For the machine learning one, it's the one we saw until now. So controller to use is the one in the cloud part. Workers to use is the cloud workers with a topology tolerance of same, so to restrict the usage of workers to just the cloud workers and the follow up goes in the, the default case. So finally, the default uh, um, policy is used for the tagless functions and the machine learning fun functions. Here we define two, um, two policy tags, uh, one that uses the control, the local controller one and the other, the local controller two, they are choose randomly. So a request that goes with the scheduling uh, the policy, the default policy will uh, randomly use one of the two controllers inside the smart factory. For both of them, we have the same uh, policy, uh, the same workers. So we have a list of workers set, the internal ones, which are the, the local workers without the edge workers, and then the cloud workers. We have the strategy of best first. So First, we, uh, the internal workers will always be uh, always be picked um, when they roll uh, unavailable, invalid. The request goes to the cloud worker, and inside we choose the workers randomly. So finally, this is the case study with the the configuration scripts. Um, so we have the local part where the uh, with the local controller uses the critical one. The default one is used by these two and the machine learning on it on the cloud part. An interesting case with the policy for the cloud um, the cloud controller is that we have topology tolerance same and the follow-up default. So we are restricting other controllers to keep using the cloud uh, workers. Um, in case the uh, cloud controller fails and the um, fall and the request goes to the default case, we could pick either controller one or controller two, but then inside we will only permit to only allow to use the cloud workers anyway. So the machine learning will always go in the cloud workers. In case all of the cloud workers uh, are unavailable, the request can be fulfilled. So that that was the uh, application then we I wanted to run some tests and benchmarks, especially to see the overhead of our components. 
we because um, custom scheduling policies come with a price. So being being able to add all these components to OpenWhisk leave um, allow nginx and the controller to read the, the tab scripts and choose um, the proper workers uh, can uh, add some overhead so we tried to we wanted to do two tests two kind of tests uh, for the impact of this new overhead the one focused on the overhead so focused on the performance uh, and the other on data locality we wanted to see the actual effects of the policies in a scenario where we have to access a database and have some uh, meaningful data transfers on the network. So we deployed, to do this, we deployed OpenWhisk over eight uh, VMs um, across two regions, uh, France and the East US. So just mimicking the case study with two controllers in one region and one in another. And um, also we had a MongoDB instance on the East West so to to have some data to query for the data locality test. And we uh, did the test using all four of the new uh, distribution policies about uh, the ones to um, restrict the access to other workers from controllers uh, in some zones. So for the overhead test, uh, we ran six different uh, functions. We did we had the different configuration for its function. Uh, for example, for, for the LOJS, we had uh, 10 different runs each time with using JMeter to run 200 uh, invocations. Um, but we had, uh, so we had LOJS, which is basically a simple hello world function, takes a parameter and returns a string. Sleep, it waits three uh, seconds. This is to test um, the to do benchmarks about handling multiple functions running for several seconds. And matrix uh, mult uh, measures, it multiplies some matrices. It's used, it is used to measure the performance of handling function performing a meaningful, meaningful computation. And then called start, uh, which is a parameterless variant of LOJS um, with the, um, but uh, having a, a very heavy set of dependencies, 42 megabytes. This uh, function, we run it uh, every 11 minutes because uh, in OpenWhisk there is a 10 minute cache um, for the container. So uh, if we run a function, the container is kept up to avoid the other cold starts. Cold starts and worst starts are another uh, big problem in serverless computing. And, uh, and then we had the uh, Slack post and PyCat JS, PyCat J from the wonderless set, uh, wonderless uh, data set. It's basically a collection of uh, functions, real world functions used to benchmark uh, several platforms. These two were uh, one of the few that actually compiled uh, could be used from wonderless. Slack post sends a message through the Slack API and the PyCat J is a formatter from JSON string to dic a Python compatible dictionary. So the overhead test results um, are uh, from this graph. Um, we run uh, both OpenWhisk Vanilla to compare it with our modified OpenWhisk without our for our modified OpenWhisk with, uh, without using tab scripts. But uh, one run for uh, um, one graph for uh, um, sorry one bar for uh, each type of policy of worker distribution policy. So in the result, we can see that uh, vanilla open whisk is actually performs better in the cold start. The graphs are in seconds for the time of the execution of the function, and also in the sleep uh, in the sleep test. Um, it, we expected even more uh, overhead. The, the sleep, the, the test, uh, the sleep test has a negligible overhead. Um, it is, there is some variance over the um, the type of policies, but uh, uh, in this case, for the sleep, the overhead is very small. For the call start, um, we had a uh, worse performance. But uh, in all other tests. Uh, um, 
we uh, for some policies we outperformed uh, open with vanilla especially for the default to worker distribution policy which outperforms both the open with vanilla and the other policies uh, this policy the default policy combines the standard weighting in way and the standard way in which uh, open with allocates resources where each worker reserves the same amount of resources to each controller and our topology based uh, using the zones of the cluster um, approach where each controller selects the workers in the same zone first and then uh, it uh, it has access to some uh, resource in other workers so overall they were not bad tests uh, but uh, bad results for the overhead tests for the data transfer test uh, we run two type of, of um, functions one one test we call mongodb it, it uses the mongodb database uh, to query a lightweight um, json document of 100 bytes and the other we call data locality it uses the same database that we, uh, it queries a large document 124 megabytes to this test is to witness both the data, uh, the impact of data locality with respect to the latency and the bandwidth occupation. For, uh, so we run this test first without a scheduling policy, without using TAP, um, a TAP script, uh, and compare it as before the four uh, policies for the worker resource distribution against uh, vanilla open whisk. Uh, in, uh, in, in this case, the rightmost bar is the one with the ATAP script. With the MongoDB test, um, in all cases, we have to perform a open whisk vanilla, although there is a higher uh, variance. The best distribution model in this case uh, uh, was, it came out to be shared, the one that uh, um, each controller have all the access, they have access to all the resources, to all the worker, but still focusing first on the same uh, uh, zone. We expected this variance uh, that um, it is due to the very lightweight data that we required. So um, being just 100 bytes doesn't really impact performance. On the other hand, on the data locality case, the top script uh, actually shows uh, it is the best um, result. Uh, it improves dramatically the latency. Uh, by we had a very simple uh, task script to just uh, send the, the data locality function to the workers in the same network in the same zone of the database, improving dramatically the latency. Where uh, the other non tab script uh, uh, open whisk have around ten almost ten seconds of uh, of execution time, where with the tab script we have even less than five seconds. And we choose this shared lo um, policy for the task grid because we it allows us to mix uh, local and remote workers. Okay, and uh, besides the overhead and latency test, other uh, main other main advantages um, that we can get, that we tap we can um, bring is the basically the function isolation over a, a, an hybrid cluster. In this case, we have the same diagram, the same scenario of having OpenWIS deployed over the cloud and the local network, where the local network is divided in the edge part and the generic part. Being able to uh, give a scheduling policies like this and to isolate some function to just some workers means that we can divide with just one uh, um, open whisk installation an entire uh, cluster into three parts to do the the same isolation with the norm with vanilla open whisk we would have to deploy it three times we would have to deploy on the same hardware that um, has the controller controller one uh, in, op in open whisk vanilla um, basically two times to have uh, the local controller to use the edge workers it will be one deployment of open whisk another deployment will uh, have the um, hardware with both controller one and controller two to use the local and the cloud workers 
and that third deployment to just use control cloud controller and cloud workers instead being able to um, impose the usage of just some workers to some function we can isolate the parts of the cluster with just one uh, uh, open whisk installation then we have better latency in case we take advantage of the data locality principle so we could, uh, in this case, we managed to decrease the data transfer over the network, resulting also in a greener open whisk, since it uses less resources and uh, performs less uh, network traffic. Yeah, so to conclude, um, we will, uh, I will show you some ideas that we have for uh, future works. We want to formalize the semantics of the TAP. So we're just already starting formalizing a subset of TAP. Uh, so now, but also we would like to evolve TAP to, uh, to accept custom strategies. So we have the, those three strategies to choose a worker random, best first, and the platform one that is the vanilla uh, algorithm. It will be nice to offer the, a user the possibility to write, to code their own uh, strategies make it even more customizable and uh, uh, useful for their use cases also we would like to uh, put effort on creating a system that can actually suggest and uh, for generate policies even using uh, runtime data and uh, do and create some configurator optimizer so this is top to conclude the work is stop the language language to configure the scheduling of action in a serverless platform. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Giuseppe, for your talk. I wonder whether if there is any question from the audience. Yeah. 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 Well, Please, Tony, go on. No, no, Ivan, you first. <laughs> OK, thanks. Um, it's probably related to one of your future work items. Uh, yeah. um, I, I, I remember that some of your co-authors, at least Jacopo, maybe also someone else, uh, worked on uh, uh, given uh, topology and uh, uh, various characteristics, find the optimal deployment. Uh, mm -hmm. While here, what you do, you somehow assume to have the optimal deployment or at least a good deployment and you use it to configure uh, uh, how the serverless stuff works. Mm, can you probably connect the two uh, piece of work so that one can describe the topology and it is up to the system to understand which policies yeah. are better and, and why? That, that's actually uh, one of our, uh, of our long-term goals, let's say. Because at, at this point, the platform uh, is useful, uh, especially on premise. So if you already have the cluster set up with all, uh, you know, all the, your nodes and your hardware, you can customize the scheduling a bit. Uh, you can give scheduling policies to use those worker better, but uh, also uh, optimize the, um, the deployment of your uh, nodes uh, will be, um, a needed piece or a very interesting piece to add to this, uh, to a modified, uh, uh, to, uh, to extend the open whisk even more and to be yeah, able to. Probably was meaning something simpler in the sense that you use a lot of labels. So uh, the guy writing your top code should know that cloud uh, workers have some features while yeah. uh, instead of using labels, you can. I mean, you can just program your, say, you look, uh, cloud nodes have these features, and then he will find the labels that are better to use for configuring. So somehow generating your script uh, from a description of the system and of the application, maybe. Yeah, that will be, that was in our plans for, uh, as a future work, for sure. It will be interesting to um, expand on the feature of using labels and uh, give more uh, access to data about the workers, but especially have a system that can uh, generate, the, use those data for uh, opti optimal deployment and generate the policies. Okay, thanks. So, 
So Antonio, please. So yeah, I have a couple of questions. One is very general, no? Uh, let's say it starts from your initial motivation. So my my main question is, um, let's say the function as a service paradigm, one of the striking uh, advantages that people have from that paradigm is that uh, they can completely forget about uh, all the deployment and all the management and all the virtual machines, all the, let's say, virtualized hardware platform. You know? So uh, while your motivation is to allow these uh, strategies to be defined, so my question is, who who should write these policies in your in your view? I mean, the the application owner. Uh, in my view, um, since this, of course, uh, using uh, service computing will the main advantage is to forget about servers. But there are many uh, companies that actually deploy on premises uh, this platform, these open source platforms like OpenWhisk or OpenFast. So in in my view, there will be there will be a, for example, a company which has some teams that uh, do the, for example, front end, back end, and they create the functions, and they of course have the DevOps teams that uh, uh, manage the platform on our in house. So I think it will be mostly the DevOps team that talking with the uh, the developer team. They can receive the information about the function that they've wrote and uh, apply some scheduling policies on the on their uh, platform. Yeah, it is not in, in some context uh, people will react because you said the, the DevOps team and the development team, no? like uh, so, so you have in mind uh, two different teams, what you call the development team okay. is the team, uh, let's say, what I was calling the application operator or you see what I mean? It, it is not clear to me because if it is the application owner or, or who should manage the application, then maybe the language that you're providing is is too low level perhaps if it is okay. instead uh, the 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 group the team of engineers uh, who is uh, handling uh, the the fast uh, deployment uh, i mean the, the infrastructure deployment the, the, the infrastructure itself then uh, uh, then the application owner should uh, talk in some other language some other simpler language it's just a question, I mean, the, or maybe a suggestion to try to uh, clarify who who should write these these mm -hmm. specs, no? Because it is not uh, obvious that, for example, an application owner who thought uh, uh, his application in terms of fast, then uh, he can be ready or, or she can be ready to to write the specification. In, in my understanding. Okay. No. Thank you. But, but I have suggest. a second question. The second question is easier. In, in your article, you <clears throat> mentioned this loca uh, location awareness uh, as one of the motivations, and you also mentioned data, no? And also during your presentation, you talked about this data awareness. Now, uh, my question here is, is that data are dynamic uh, too. So uh, there is, uh, uh, for many applications, the, the, the data flow from one part of the system to another part of the system. And I missed how uh, you can uh, deal with that in your specification. Yeah, uh, as of now, for, to, flow, to make the data flow, for example, from one function to the other, in some sort of pipeline. Uh, with TypeScript, you can uh, um, redirect the invocation of this function in a pipeline, for example, on the same worker. Okay. So that uh, at least... But, but you somehow assume that data location is known before writing the specification. Yeah. Okay. See, we, uh, yeah, we focused uh, mainly on, for data locality, we focused on main, mainly on actually a database 
as okay. a place uh, to get the data and uh, very nice. So, thank thank okay. you.